Should you fake it until you make it as a realtor? Not only can this completely ruin your business, but ironically, I'm actually gonna tell you why there is some element of this that you do need in your business if you want to build a successful brand. So let's unpack the truth about faking it until you make it and what that actually means and how you need to apply to your personal brand because there is some truth to it, but there also is some lies associated with it as well. And based on me being somebody that has a personal branding agency and has helped create some of the most successful personal brands in the industry, I want to tell you exactly what you need to do because ultimately people are leading you astray and I don't wanna see you fail because of it. What's up guys, my name is Mike Sherrard and I'm excited to unpack this concept because it's very near and dear to my heart for a reason that I'll explain. I did this at one time in the worst of ways. It was a period in about 2019 where I was kind of lost in my real estate business and I wanted to go more into the creator space and I felt like I needed to look a certain way and doing all of these photo shoots professionally with poses and that I'm so uncomfortable doing, I hated it. I, would, I felt disgusting with myself after every single time I did them, after every single time I posted it. It was so not me. But there was a time as well as a brand new agent where I had the least BMW, I dressed in a suit every day, and that also was not really me, but there was a reason behind it. So let's talk about this kind of avenue of personal branding and should you or should you not fake it until you make it. Now, the first concept about faking it until you make it is what most people perceive. Most people, especially in the real estate industry, just because of the stigma of the ecosystem we're in, feel that they need to wear a suit every time they leave the house, or they need to drive a certain car, a BMW, a Mercedes, whatever, and they need to have certain objects, watches, that type of stuff, in order to get clients. So firstly, that's a bit ridiculous, but there is some truth to that that I'm going to unpack. But first I need to start with the psychology of faking it until you make it. Now, the reason why this disgusts me and the concept as a whole, as somebody who did it, is the concept of the words you say carry so much weight. So when you're telling yourself that you're faking it, you will feel like a fake. And when you feel like a fake, from experience and many other agents that have coached, it is exhausting to create content. This is why so many people struggle with social media content and are inconsistent because it's extremely difficult to get excited about putting out content when you're trying to be a different version of somebody else. You're not being authentic, you're not being genuine. How easy is it to create content when you're just being you? The question I always ask people is, let's say you are really close with your family like I am with mine. If somebody came up to you and asked you to talk about your family, could you talk about it pretty easily? Or do you think you're gonna struggle with it? You're going to be able to talk about it quite easily because you're passionate about it, but also it's authentic to you. Whereas if you are asked to speak about tennis and you've never touched a tennis racket before, you can try and bullshit your way there, but it's gonna be very inauthentic. You're gonna hate doing it. Even if somebody told you what to say, you're gonna feel some type of way. The same thing goes when it comes to the concept of faking it until you make it. And until you make it, also psychologically is going to make you feel like you have not made it anywhere, even though that's not the case. So let's just get the psychology out of the way of the fact that the saying, the phrase faking it till you make it has a toxic impact on your mindset when it comes to doing it. But again, I will mention there is a time and place to do this, which we will get into. So let's unpack that a little bit, which is personal branding. You are your brand as a realtor. And you've likely heard the quote before, dress for the job you want, not the one that you have. So when it comes to personal branding, and this is where I want to give you a different take on faking it until you make it, is that your personal brand should be aspirational in nature, meaning future pacing, where you want to be, where you want to go, but realistic today. So instead of saying that you're gonna fake it until you make it because you want to break into luxury and you want to, and you feel the need to wear a suit. Well, the truth of the matter is, if you wanna break into luxury like I did, you do have to wear a suit in the beginning. It's one of these transitionary phases where you'll see some agents that are now casually just wearing a polo or wearing a golf shirt or something like that and they're crushing million dollar listings left, right and center. Well, 
Usually they didn't start that way, and if they did, they usually had some sort of past connection to wealthy people, parents, previous job, whatever. But there is an element of that dressing a certain way because you have to put yourself in the consumer's shoes. For example, especially younger agents like I was, 24 when I got into the business, I was listing three to $15 million properties at 24 as a new agent in my first year. So I have to think if I was a seller and I worked my whole life to get this $3 million property, if I see a kid that dresses like a kid, looks like a kid, looks like a new agent, doesn't take care of themselves, doesn't put effort into how they present themselves, am I gonna put my lifelong work of asset into this person and trust them? Well, unfortunately, even though you probably are the best person for the job, just based on how humans are wired, they are going to assume that you're not. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just reality. So you have to look a certain way if you wanna break into a certain space. I was also well aware of the fact that when I wore those suits, in the average price point communities where I primarily door knocked, it pushed them away. So I had to dress differently, slacks and a polo. So the element of faking it until you make it of, yes, take pride in yourself. If you want to break into luxury, there is a certain standard that you need to uphold to break into that space. And over time you can find your groove and you can change that, but there is truth to that. But that is not faking it. That is projecting where you want to go and dressing the part today, even though you haven't done it. And that's the only way that you'll get to do it, right? So when you see some people saying, why are you wearing a suit like that? Or why are you trying to dress up all fancy? Like, what the hell? Because you're trying to crush it and you're trying to build a business you've cared about and that you've dreamed about. Who cares what other people say? Because you're gonna be the one that gets the listing and they won't. So you just need to understand that, yes, that element of the faking it until you make it is true but it's not faking it, it is future pacing where you want to go and acting today as if you've already gotten there, which is the concept of the book, The E-Myth, I highly recommend you read it, which is understand the business that you want to have and execute today as if you already have it. So the concept I wanna leave you with, which is the most important concept, is that authenticity, being genuine, wins the game every time. I see so many agents that get thrown for a loop and go down the wrong path because they feel the need to break into luxury or they feel the need to do this style of business or dress this way when that is not authentically them and it doesn't relate to their target audience, right? Because we talked about luxury, there is a truth to that. But at the end of the day, you are going to be more consistent, you're gonna have more fun, operate with more passion when you're just being genuinely, authentically yourself because the worst thing that can happen is you can act a certain way and then people meet you in person and you're completely different. Anybody that's met me knows I'm exactly how I am on camera, exactly in person and anywhere else that you're gonna see me on Zoom calls, it does not matter. This is just me. My content blew up when I stopped trying to fake it and be somebody else, some stupid poser of an influencer to just being me and sharing the value that I have based on experience. And what you'll see is that as you start to just authentically be yourself, it's your superpower for a couple reasons. Number one, nobody can be a better version of you than you. And so there's gonna be a ton of people that relate to you. If you're more introverted, if you're more casual, who cares? Go after the people that are going to relate to that. You're gonna have way more fun operating your business because you're gonna do it and it's gonna feel like you. You're just being yourself and guess what happens when you're just being yourself? You attract your ideal clients who are just like you. So you're gonna have way more fun working with those clients. So every time I've seen an agent transition from trying to be somebody else to just being authentically themselves, whatever that might be, tapping into the great outdoors or hunting or fishing or mountain climbing or any other coffee, whatever their hobby is, cars, it doesn't matter. Every time I've seen them just authentically be themselves, quirky, weird, sarcastic, funny, serious, introverted, when they lean into that, there's a concept that's really important, which is that you are most qualified to help the person that you used to be. Ed Milet says this all the time. So if you're that way, 
you're most qualified to help the other people that are that way. And guess what? You're gonna have a ton more fun while doing it. So the moral of this story, before sharing with you what to do next to build your personal brand, is that yes, there's an element of future pacing and dressing for the job you want, not the one that you have. That is not faking it. It's just actually building a freaking business the right way. But you need to have fun with it. You need to be genuine. You need to be authentic because that's gonna allow you to be more consistent, more passionate, and have a ton of fun. Now, if you do want to know exact steps to take in order to build your personal brand, now that you've identified your authentic self and where you want to go, then check out this next video because it walks through everything that you need in order to build your personal brand right now so that you can stand out amongst the clutter of the market because at the end of the day, a strong personal brand not only gets paid more, converts higher, spends less on advertising, and wins in every single market.